So by now you would have come across the announcement that Salesforce made in the last weekend, which is nothing but introduction of something called Lightning Web Components. And even before we try to understand what are Lightning Web Components and how do we build them, and can we make sure that Lightning Web Components work along with or in parallel with Aura Components and stuff like that, let us take care of some prerequisites. And that is nothing but we need to sign up for a Spring 19 pre-release org because Lightning Web Components is a pre-release feature and we would need a pre-release org to make sure that we build Lightning Web Components. This is the URL that we need to navigate back to. Quickly fill this form up and try clicking on Start Free Trial button. The moment you click the button, in the backend a new Spring 19 release org will be whipped up. There you go, the org is ready. Let me close all these pop-up messages. And once after I spin up a new org, the very next thing that I need to do is, I need to navigate back to something called developer.salesforce.com forward slash tools forward slash SFDX CLI. And we need to go ahead with the process of installing SFDX command line interface. And if you have not followed my dive into Salesforce DX web series, I would request you to check it out. I did an entire web series on setting up the Salesforce DX environment in your PC or Mac. And if you have not checked it out, I would request you to check it out. Based on your OS, you need to download the executable. And once after the executable is downloaded, you need to install it. And the installation process will be pretty much straightforward. All you have to do is click on next, next, next and click on save. That is it. Let me go back to the org that I have whipped up just now. So the first step is signing up for the release org. And the second step is installing SFDX CLI. And the third step is enabling dev hub feature in our pre-release org. Let me go ahead and enable it. So I'll go with the assumption that you have successfully installed SFDX CLI and also enable the dev hub account. The next thing that we need to do is we need to check if SFDX CLI is properly installed. The way I do it is open your terminal if you're using a Mac and it will be command prompt if you're using a PC. SFDX is the command that I'll be running. If you see something like this, it means that SFDX CLI is properly installed. Let me also check the version of SFDX. The way I do it is SFDX hyphen hyphen version. This is the version of SFDX. Now I need to upgrade the version of CLI to a pre-release version. The way I do it is I need to run a command. The command is SFDX plugins install Salesforce DX at the rate pre hyphen release. There you go, it's installing. It may take a couple of minutes to finish off the installation. There you go, it is done. Now let me check if the SFDX pre-release version is properly installed. Let me run this command. This is the version. Now that we are done with this step, let me move on to the next step, which is nothing but configuring our editor. And the editor that I'll be making use of is Visual Studio Code. Once after I open the editor, we need to go ahead and we need to install a couple of extensions. The way I do it is, let me click on this icon. Let me search for something called Salesforce Extension Pack. We need to install it. Let me reload to activate it. And the next extension that we need to install is Lightning Web Components. Just like how we have installed the earlier extension, we also need to install it. There you go, it is installed and we need to reload it to activate. Now that we are done installing both the extensions, let me check if everything is set up properly. I will press Command Shift P and when I type SFDX, I should see these things. When I see these things, it means that the setup is properly done. Now let me remove the extension sidebar and let us quickly try to create a new project. The way I do it is Command Shift P and then SFDX. Click on Create Project. We need to give a name here and then return it. We need to choose the folder.
there you go we are done creating the new project and we can see a folder structure here and now let me try to authorize the dev hub the way i do it is command shift p sfdx authorize a dev hub that is the option that we need to make use of as i've mentioned earlier if you're new to dev hub scratch org and terminology like that i would request you to go through the salesforce dx web series which i did there we did six to seven episodes on how to set up salesforce dx environment in your pc or mac i'll try to pause it here you need to log in and you need to give access to your account once after you successfully log in when you try to open up your vs code editor you will see a successfully authorized message and the next thing that we need to do now is we need to create a scratch arc the way i do it is i'll make use of command shift p i'll choose this option and we need to give a name for the json file if you're okay with the default file then you can just return it and then it'll ask you the alias name for the scratch arc if you're okay with the default name once again return it and then it'll ask you the maximum duration that you want the scratch arc to be active i'll choose the maximum number of days and when you return it in the back end it will try to create a scratch arc this may take some time there you go the scratch arc is successfully created when you scroll down you'll try to see a successfully created scratch arc message now that we have successfully created the scratch arc let me go ahead and let us try creating our first lightning web component the way i do it is command shift p sftx search for lightning and then you'll see this command which is create lightning web component and then it will ask us the desired directory name if you're okay with it just return it and then we need to give a name to our lightning component say hello world i want this to be pretty straightforward and simple and once after you get a hang of how things work in the back end that is when we can go ahead and we can try to create a complex lightning component return it when you scroll down these are all the files which were created in the back end and when you try to check your folder structure we have something called hello world.html and then we have something called hello world.js and then .js hyphen meta.xml these are the three files which were created in the back end so let me open up the html page you'll see opening and closing template tag and we need to put our code between these two tags so i'll try to pull up a lightning card UI component between the template tags. And now between the div tags, I'll try to put some static message. And here, message is the name of the variable. And we'll try to populate the value to this variable in our JS file. And now I'll try to pull a out of the box lightning button component here so that when user clicks on the button, I want to assign a dynamic value to the variable message. So let me pull lightning button UI component here. So after we have the lightning button, the next attribute that I'll be making use of is value. The next attribute that I'll be making use of is on click. And let me end the tag. So when user clicks on this button, this is the function that will be invoked. So I need to provide the implementation for this function. And back in the JS file, this is the basic syntax that we get when we try to whip up a new lightning web component. And here, we need to make use of something called track. And message is the name of the variable. And we need to import track from lightning web component framework. Fetch message is the function that we need to implement. And here I'll say this dot message is equals to Salesforce CAS. Let me save this file and also let me save the HTML file. And in the meta.xml file, we need to specify where this component can be used. So let me change this to true. And then the next tag that I'll be making use of is targets. And between targets, 
the first target will be lightning underscore underscore app page so we need to explicitly mention where this lightning component can be used and i'm saying that this can be used in app page let me duplicate this line a couple of times and then we can also use this lightning web component in record page and we can also use this component in home page let me save this and once after you save this let me push this code to the default scratch arc the way i do it is command shift p sfdx push source to default scratch arc okay looks like i have a typo there is an extra e here let me save it and let me try to push it once again okay so it is pushed now so now that it is pushed properly all we need to do is we need to open our default scratch arc the way i do it is command shift p and sfdx open default arc it opens up the default scratch arc okay so this is the org into which we pushed our code using sfdx cli all i'll try to do is i'll go back to sales app and i'll try to embed the lightning web component that we have created now into the home page and then i'll try to click on edit page we'll be taken back to lightning app builder and here when you scroll down you'll see the custom lightning web component that we have created just now try to drag it and drop it somewhere in the home page and then try to save it you also need to activate it as in as org defaults save it let me save it once again let us go back okay so we got the custom component that we have plugged and we can see some text but then we have a small button but then we are not able to see it the reason is back in our html page i have not used something called label attribute i have not used it wantedly so that once after we are done setting up the page i just wanted to make a small modification and then push it and uh, demonstrate it so now i'll make use of an attribute called label say fetch now quickly save it and then command shift p sfdx push source to default scratch org okay it is done and back in the org let us try to refresh it okay so we got the button and when you try to click on the button you should see something called hello salesforce cas so the moment you click on the button back in the js file we are trying to assign value to a variable called message dynamically and we are trying to get it and we are trying to display it on the lightning web component and you can see that lightning web components are exactly similar to how aura components look like and there are many other things that we need to discuss about lightning web components but then i want to put this episode short and sweet so that's all for this session and we'll resume back with one more episode see you